Camping is often a fun and adventurous activity, but sometimes the greatest dangers come not from the wild, but from an eerie, unsettling atmosphere. Listening to the real stories my friends and their families have shared, I often wonder why they shouldn't be fiction. These tales are filled with strange figures lurking in the darkness, mysterious sounds that can't be explained, and encounters that defy logic. But trust me, these tales are true. You'll understand their truthfulness after listening to these chilling accounts. If you're planning a camping trip soon, you might want to think twice before watching these spooky campfire tales. Terrifying camping horror stories alone. Story 1. Night of the Unknown Beast I'm Paul, an old man now, but my camping memories still make me feel young, except for one camping memory that haunts me. This story is from the mid-80s, when I went camping with my family. We were at Allegheny State Park, a beautiful park straddling the border between New York and Pennsylvania. We love tent camping, finding joy in fishing during the day and gathering around campfires at night. However, there was a significant issue with raccoons back then. They were so numerous that hunters were brought in to control the population. One day, during a week-long camping trip, the raccoons were relentless. Every night they tried to invade our campsite, their glowing eyes reflecting in the firelight as they rummaged for food. Despite our efforts to keep them at bay by chucking rocks, they always returned once the fire was out and we were in bed. On our last night, we decided to stay an extra night. Many of our neighboring campers had left, making the park unusually quiet. As darkness fell, we gathered around the campfire, my parents, my two sisters, and I. We had our pile of rocks ready for the raccoons, but something felt different. The night was eerily silent. Even the owls, usually hooting above us, were quiet. Suddenly, all the raccoons disappeared. The only sound was the crackling fire. Then we heard footsteps in the woods behind my pup tent, which was set apart from my family's tent. Our dog, normally quick to bark, was silent but alert. My dad, sensing something was off, stood up slowly, his old lawn chair creaking. He called out, asking if someone needed help, but there was no response. The footsteps stopped. Then came an unbelievably loud roar, a mix between a scream and a growl, unlike anything we had ever heard. It wasn't human, and it wasn't a bear. The other animals scattered, leaving us frozen in fear. The footsteps resumed, moving away from our campsite. My dad quickly gathered us into the family tent, forbidding me from sleeping in my pup tent that night. Later, while we were all asleep, a noise at the back of our station wagon woke my dad and me. He grabbed a flashlight and cautiously approached the car. What we saw was terrifying. A huge, hairy creature, taller than the open gate of our station wagon, rummaging through our cooler. The creature turned, saw the light, and ran into the forest, its footsteps loud and heavy. We were terrified and went unconscious. The next morning, we found the cooler emptied, a pickle jar opened, and cheese with a bite mark. We packed up and left in silence. My dad reported the incident to a park ranger, who nonchalantly mentioned similar sightings. Could it have been a skinwalker? My dad, now in his 90s, occasionally brings it up at family gatherings. Though my sisters thought we were joking, the fear in my dad's eyes convinced them otherwise. Whatever it was, it left a lasting impression on us and scared off the raccoons for good. What do you think it was? Story 2. A Night in the Meth Village. I'm Ryan, and my girlfriend Brinda is Indian. A couple of years ago, we decided to take a road trip, camping from San Francisco to Portland. Renting a car, we planned to stop at different campsites each night. One evening, as we arrived at a campsite, we found it closed for the season, despite what their website said. As the sun set, we frantically searched Google Maps for another site and stumbled upon a forest fire outpost. The firefighters informed us most sites were closed, but a few remained on an old map. Following their directions, we arrived at a dilapidated, overgrown campsite and, desperate, decided to stay. We saw a few other tents nearby, which we took as a good sign. As we began setting up, two men walked through our site, striking up a conversation. They looked Ralph one wearing a hoodie with no shirt, both skinny and dirty. They claimed to be seasonal workers camping to save money. While talking to these men, an old white Mercedes pulled in, blasting rap music. The occupants, looking like insane clown posse fans, scanned the area before quickly driving off. The two rough men soon left as well, and we continued setting up camp. 
Then, an older woman with a raspy voice approached us. She was friendly, but asked strange questions. You guys here for the horror show? She asked. Confused, we assumed she meant a haunted house, as it was early October. After she left, my girlfriend expressed her unease about the people we'd encountered and the silence around the campsite. No music, no laughter, just quiet. I tried to reassure her, thinking it was just a coincidence. As night fell, strange things began to happen. The two men re-emerged from the woods without any light, silently returning to their tent. They had a brief, heated argument before one stormed out and headed to the woman's campsite, making unnerving eye contact with me. He climbed into a truck where someone was already inside, and they started smoking something. It dawned on me. They were smoking meth. This realization explained everything. The erratic behavior, the coughs, the spooked juggalos. I admitted to my girlfriend that we needed to leave. We packed up slowly, trying not to raise suspicion. Suddenly the car wouldn't move. Panic set in as I thought they had slashed our tires. Then I realized the parking brake was on. She released it and we sped onto the main path. As we drove away, we heard screaming from the campsite. Weeks later, during a casual chat, a friend mentioned that the place was haunted. A mother and her two sons were killed there while camping. To this day, I wonder what might have happened if we had stayed a moment longer. Did we narrowly escape a dangerous encounter? Or were we just paranoid? Was there something supernatural lurking in that campsite? I guess we'll never know.